We love Seiji, beloved Seiji. Seiji, among so many things, has been and is one of the most balletic conductors that we've had. His body was so beautiful, uh, he was born to be on a podium showing how music is working. He was in class with so many of the great conductors of his generation. How fortunate we've been, they were all together. But at Tanglewood, we had Seiji, we had Claudio Obata, we had Subin Mehta, and many others that would come through, still coming. And, and uh, they had made great careers, and, and we were been so fortunate to have them there. And Seiji stayed with us at Tanglewood for 29 years, which is unthinkable of, in terms of a, a tenure for a music director. And it was a happy time with Seiji and a, a, a time of production of great amount of wonderful music with the orchestra, both the Tanglewood and Boston Symphony. Looking back now, we had very serious maestri, older gentleman, Charles Munch, of course, and then Ste Steinberg came and uh, Eric Leinsdorf, and, and uh, it was the old generation, uh, wonderful, of course, but Seiji came in, I think he was 35 years old, something like that, young, acrobatic, uh, most unbelievable memory. I remember in the 1970s when Seiji was on television a lot from Boston conducting, and I listened to many, many of his programs before I ever met him or expected to meet him, and I admired his conducting, his music making, and among, among so many things, his prodigious memory. He couldn't, mem he couldn't conduct without having the thing uh, absorbed in his mind. So I say, Seiji, how do you remember these, all of this? How can you do that? Well, he said, I don't know. He just can see it. So it's a, it's a prodigious gift uh, that I have seen operating close at hand where people will give him a score that he hadn't seen on a Tuesday, a difficult score, and, and conduct it on Thursday from memory. Now, that's some kind of superhuman ability in my feeble mind uh, that doesn't appear very often in life. I think the Boston public really connected with Seiji and loved him very much. He loved to go to the Boston Red Sox baseball games, and he loved to eat popcorn and drink this little white beer that comes there and sometimes fall asleep. <laughs> uh, but he loved the game and is devoted to it. Now, I think... I think Boston, uh, his connection to Boston was not opaque in the sense that you, you could see he was connected, you know, and, and I think people felt that you have Mr. Steinberg and Miss, Mr. Leinsdorf for all those years. What a wonderful thing to have a contemporary young man who has this genius ability, uh, who loves the Red Sox. How could he not succeed in Boston? People say, what is the favorite music that Seiji conducted? And the first thing I would say is, of course, Mahler too. Naturally, we're going to hear that. Safani Fasasik is one of them. But also, we had pop concerts in Boston where he would play fiddle faddle by Leroy Anderson, which was one of his favorites. And he would joke with the fiddlers and be actually very funny and very choreographically funny. And the famous concert where he played the typewriter with his green eye shade and his cigar, which I conducted for him. And then one year, I played Mozart piano concerto with him for some televised fundraising. And I never played with Seiji before, as, uh, know him as an accompanist. And it was like he wasn't there. It, he was, uh, you could slow up, you could accelerate a little bit, and his, he was on top of you like a blanket, the most wonderful accompanist. And with singers, he could breathe. Anna-Sophie Mutis, she always said that working with Seiji was like dancing with Seiji, you know?